<laughs> Sharonda Williams, pair weight. Hi, how are both of you doing today? Really good. How are you? Hi, Sharonda. Good. I'm doing good. You know, I had a roller coaster of a week, all the anxiety that the show gave me, but it, it was <laughs> good anxiety. But, you know, Darby, Nina got her groove back. I was here for she that. She got her groove back she this got, season. She got her groove back. And I wanted to know... <laughs> How was it, you know, because we we deal with grief, but we never talk about how it is actually being able to move on in life. Yeah. Like. So how was that portraying that for Nina this season? That was one of the more challenging aspects of uh, the season um, was how does Nina move forward? Was what, what does that look like? One thing that I really appreciate was that one of the commonalities that she finds with this new love interest is that he has also lost someone. He's, uh, he's lost his wife um, to a sudden, a sudden death as well. So there's some commonality there and that made a sort of anchored it um, in a real, a real way. And that Nina hasn't totally lost her grief. So, uh, so to get to continue to sort of play both was both challenging and, uh, I appreciated it. It wasn't just, you know, this or that. It was, it wasn't simple. It was, it was layered. No, I love, I love watching her journey. I was like, okay, look at Nina. She yeah. Got yeah. It was nice to play her, like gets that she gets to be happy for a little while. Yeah. And that was the unusual sort of space to uh, be in this season because I'd only ever known her as like really, you know, in knots, really in turmoil. So it was, it was nice. But what I enjoy about both of your characters is you're kind of going through the same thing, but at two different portions of the season. Yeah. Um, and I love that, you know, we focus on what it means to feel lost or to almost feel as though that you've lost your purpose. And I wanted to know for the both of you, what do you do when you feel like you've really lost yourself self, and what do you do to recenter and really get back on the right path? And kind of we can start with you. Oh, God. I mean, I mean it's hard. I mean, I feel like we're all in the middle of, especially with the year and a half that we've had, we're all in the middle of answering that question for ourselves. Um, I feel like for me, I mean, you know, for example, I mean, we've been shooting the show. We shot the show for like a year because we did two seasons back to back. And so that brand that covered a lot of the pandemic and a lot of life stuff and and a lot happened within the show and a lot happened outside of the show. And yeah. when we wrapped, which really wasn't that long ago, it was like three, four weeks ago. Um, yeah. I felt like I needed to change my routine. <laughs> uh, and I needed to, not unlike Tyler at the end of season two, in a way, I needed to go away from home to, to take a little time alone and figure out where my feet are right now in my life, um, which I think a lot of people identify with. I think I think there, I think it's very tempting when you feel lost to like keep moving, like to like keep walking, keep running, mm -hmm. uh, and it's really scary to stop and take a moment and look. Um, so I'm trying to do that. Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's putting the phone down. <laughs> I mean, to be quite literal, that that's just. Yeah. the iceberg but really like uh you know very similar to connor to you know have the courage or discipline or whatever mm -hmm. to be able to sit with yourself um to be able to take up some space um i'm also a big uh journal writer i always i have been for years and when i i find that when i allow myself that in my routine it really keeps me sort of in touch with what's going on um, so those are some ways that, that help ground me. And then also like surrounding myself with my family or for, you know, the really, the close ones, my, my people, uh, who, who know who I am and call me on my stuff. <laughs> those are the ways that I, I think I reground or find myself again. Well, I just want to tell both of you, season two is so phenomenal. It's so, so good. It's really, really good. Okay, I'm, I'm glad. It, to you. it was really that. great. And I just appreciate the both of you being so vulnerable with me and candid. And I'm just sitting there love and light your way. I really hope you have oh, a great day. Thank you. Thank you. So Back much. at you. I'm glad you like the show. I really did. It's so good. It's so, so right. good. 
Well, hi, how are both of you doing today? Good, good how are you? Michelle? I'm doing good. It's my favorite baddies. You were the cause of all my anxiety <laughs> this week. Oh my gosh. You did a great job. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Look, but I wanted to ask the both of you, you know, how would you prefer being the good guys or the villains? Like how more challenging is it for you to play a villain on the show? Fun guys, uh, like bad guys are so much fun. Like bad guys, you get to do the things that like as, as mortal human beings, we aren't allowed to do and shouldn't do. And so you get to go to work and just be crazy and chaotic and just have the time of your life. And then you get to go home and you don't get charged with anything, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, this is my first time playing a bad guy, but uh, I would love to take on more bad guy roles. Look, you can do it because you both killed it. So I'm totally here for more villain roles. Thank you. you do it, I receive it. I'm manifesting it for the both of you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate I need that. some of that. <laughs> but also, too, one of the things that I really enjoy about this season is all of our characters kind of find themselves lost. And even with our villains, it seems like they kind of get off track from what their ultimate plan is. And what I wanted to ask the both of you is what do you do when you're feeling lost and you really need to recenter and find yourself again? I paint. I love painting. I love making music. Um, this past week, I don't know, it was like Mercury and retrograde or something because Everyone. I've been feeling that way and just kind of getting to like the tactile of like painting uh, really grounds grounds me and chat, like seeing a good friend and you know that kind of thing. I don't know what Eden does. Eden probably goes and eats a couple people, but like, you know. <laughs> um, let's see, when we're on set, if I get lost, um... Well, here's the thing is I try and separate uh, my character from my real life. So, cause it sucked to play an evil person all day and go home and feel evil uh, mm -hmm. for the rest of the night. Yeah. So I try and leave that at, at home, you know, or I mean at work, cause I leave the evil there. Uh, but when I need to recenter myself in real life, uh, I don't know, I, I took up walking recently. I've been trying to do 10,000 steps a day. So that's been nice. Look, the 10,000. 10,000 steps, that's hard. I struggle every day. Yeah, it's like a, a mile or something. It's like two miles or something. Yeah. I did that the other day cleaning my house. 10,000 steps? I was just steps? like running around. In, I'm ADHD as heck. I'm very like all over the place. So I'll be running around in circles through my house all day. And I did 10,000 steps just walking around my house. Try to, try to run a marathon in there. Some guy did that during quarantine. Went viral. Your turn. We need to just do more cleaning so we can hit our 10,000 steps every day yeah <laughs> but for okay. my final my final question is I wanted to know if you could make your own key what would you want your key to do and why I know that Halia has been planning for this question she's prepared. I wrote like six different answers to this question because I just knew it was gonna come um the first one that comes can you to send mind, me one because I don't have an answer yeah I'll send you my list the first one that comes okay. to mind is uh like a rethinking of the music box key but having it be like a radio that you could turn on and it just plays exactly what you want to hear, okay. even if you don't know what it is. Um, another key would be to like put it in my face or something and it would just do my hair and makeup. I'm here for that. Yeah, the styling key. Very practical. Yeah. <laughs> I would say maybe I'm just hungry right now, um, but I would say like a food key. But you know what? I'll make it more broad, right? Uh, just kind of like uh, how the mending cabinet, you need to have the cabinet and the key, and whatever you put inside gets fixed. I would love like an imagination one where just whatever you're thinking of, whatever you're imagining, you yes. put the key in, open the thing up, and there's a, a bowl of sketty for you right there. <laughs> that's what, that's one of the ones I wrote down. See? Oh, look yeah, at that. I knew yeah. There we go. We're so into Great tune. minds. <laughs> Well, look, I wanted to thank the both of you for taking the time to speak with me. I really enjoy speaking with both of you and I'm just sending love and light, Troy. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. It was a I pleasure appreciate talking your to you energy. Too. Look, you we got to get the energy. energy. That's what we have to do. Yeah, energy out from the world. Have such a lovely day, Sharonda. Thank you, you oh, too. Recording. Thank you. How are both of you doing today? Doing Pretty well. Good. Nice to talk to you. It's great speaking with you because I have to say, after watching season two, um, it's probably one of the best shows that I've watched this year. 
and really just so good at actually tying in everything that we loved about the first one and really up in the ante for the season two. So I just wanted to thank you for giving me a good binge show to watch. I appreciate wow. you. Awesome. Thank you, thank you for your kind words. That's so yeah. nice. Yeah, no, it's really great. And one of the things that I especially appreciate that I wanted to ask you about is really keeping the heart, you know, of the series that it's based on because it is dark and violent at times. And I wanted you to talk about incorporating that into a show, but still making it family friend friendly without removing the stakes that are at hand for, you know, the Locke family. Yeah, I mean, we made an intentional choice when we were talking about this adaptation to uh, make it a bit warmer, to allow it to appeal to a, a slightly broader audience and not to lean as heavily into the horror aspect, which what you see in the comics, but still, you know, of course, maintain those aspects in the show, just not having them be as much at the forefront and really letting it be a show about this family, you know, about their journey, um, and keeping all of those thematics at play. Um, so, you know, we, we did so with the blessing of Joe and Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez who created the comics. Um, and they are very much understanding that the show gets to be its own thing um, and that it's not a literal adaptation. So it's, it's been great to be able to kind of maintain the story that is inherent in those comics, but kind of have our, you know, our own tone, put our own tone on it. But one of the aspects of this is I, I really love the character arcs and where we find some of our characters, especially once we get towards the end of season two, but a lot of the characters feel very lost on their journey. They've lost their path. And I wanted to know for the both of you, what do you do to make sure that you recenter yourself and really get back on the right path when you're feeling lost? Uh, I think you have to kind of think about what's important, what matters most. And I think these characters are exploring that along the way. You know, they're really trying to figure out what are the things that matter in their lives and, and then how do they achieve those things that matter most to them. And um, we're also exploring this whole idea of, you know, what does it mean to grow up? And, um, you know, in our world, the metaphor for that loss of innocence is not being able to remember magic. And so, you know, we, we, we really just, I think all of us as characters, all of us as people in the world, you know, we have, we have our obstacles, we have our flaws, we have things we're always trying to overcome. Nobody ever gets to a perfect place. And that's um, something that we want to have reflected in the characters that we're writing about. But also too, I love the exploration that you have of grief for the characters, because all these characters are grieving in different ways, you know, losing a loved one or their loss of freedom or their loss of their memories. And I really wanted to know, um, what was your approach about actually including that portion into the series, but delving into it in many different ways with all of our characters, especially in season two? Yeah, I think, you know, horror and fantasy allows us, one of the things I love about it is that it allows us to kind of tackle these subjects like grief. Um, but in a, you know, through an entertaining sort of lens and through these metaphors, and it's certainly the kids experimenting with the keys, it allowed them to be able to be closer to their father, which was a part of their grieving process in season one. And it also allowed them to learn about the past mistakes that he had uh, made that actually ended up contributing to his own death. So, you know, the keys are just so inherently tied to that uh, journey of them being able to kind of come through that grief and come out the other side. And it also tied, tied them to their father. So it was already, you know, it's so nicely there for us, what Joe and Gabriel have already written, just, you know, being able to use these keys to be closer to their father, I think is something that's kind of really beautiful about the show. Now also to you film me the season two and season three back to back. What was that experience like? Like, is it more hectic or is it just easier for you to actually be able to go right into another season you know you don't have to have that long break in between I think it's kind of both I mean it was it's hectic to try to make 18 episodes of a show in a row without kind of a longer period of reflection between them is it's hard but on the other hand we were able to kind of think about these 18 episodes in their totality and that was exciting Look, I was so excited to watch this season. I can't wait to see what you have in store for us in season three. But I just want to thank the both of you for taking the time to speak with me. And I'm just sending love and light your way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sharonda. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.